Picture this, it's 9 a.m. Monday morning, you've just walked into work and your boss says, I want you to create an email in the next 30 minutes because I want to run a sale in an hour from now. What are you going to do? Well, option one is you just go huddle in a corner and have a cry. But option two is you use the new Braze AI copywriter. So here we are in the Braze drag and drop email editor, but you can do this anywhere you can create copy in Braze. All I've done is set up four blocks, one for a heading, one for some body copy, one for an image, which will just slap something in there, and one for a footer. So this is just an example of what you can do. So we're going to start with the title block. I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to go down to the bottom left corner and you'll see copywriter with a little magic wand, which is often a symbol for AI. And we're going to click into there. This will open the AI copywriting assistant. So first of all, we need to write or paste in our service or product description. For example, I'm going to write 20% off all pot plants at plant world today only. And that gives the AI some idea of what we want to talk about. We go down here and we have um, a choice of different links of output uh, going from email subject line, push notification, in-app message, SMS, short one sentence, medium, two, three, two to three sentences, or long one paragraph. In this case, we're looking for a title for our email. So I might go with short one sentence. Uh, we're going to do tone. I'm going to say that I want it to be, I don't know, eye-catching. And then we hit generate. And then up here, we'll actually get five options of what we could possibly use as a title for this email. So we've got flash sale, alert, 20% off all our pot plants today. Uh, today's green deal, 20% off all plants in stock, one day only. I might go with one day only. I click the copy button here, go up here, close that, come up to my title block now, and I can literally just paste that in. And now I want some body copy for my email. So I'm going to come back down to the AI copywriter again. We're going to go in here and you can see what's happened here. It's actually lost what I wrote last time, which is a good reason to save this somewhere else. So we go 20 uh, We're going to come down here and this time we want maybe uh, two to three sentences because we're actually looking to make some body copy. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to go to eye catching again. So it's the same. I'm going to hit generate. Uh, dive into a green bonanza today only. Unlock an exclusive green deal today only at Plant World. Let's just grab the first one. We'll close this. I'll go in here and I'll paste that in. Already, if you're looking at this, we have a pretty good title. It's a pretty good body copy. You know, there is some generic value in some of this because that's just sometimes what AI does. But if you were trying to push this out really quick, a lot of people are probably going to miss this if they skim your email. Uh, and then we could do the same thing for things like subject lines. We could do the same thing for our footer. Uh, and there's also the image generation. But I'm not going to dive too deep into that today because it has its own complexities. There we go. We have a heading, a text, an image. What's that? Been like five, 10 minutes tops. And then we would just do the same thing with the footer down the bottom here if we wanted that to happen. Now, before we go too much deeper and compare AI tools, it's probably a good time to explain what I think is actually going on in the back end of Braze to help you understand how AI prompting actually works. This will actually be useful outside of Braze as well when you're working with AI. Think of this as a 101 of AI prompting anywhere. Now, for example, if you're prompting something like Microsoft's Copilot or OpenAI's ChatGPT, here's a good way to structure those prompts. We have the system prompt, the topic prompt, and the specifics. The system prompt provides a good general direction for the AI model. For example, you are the copywriter for the marketing department of a large sneaker brand. Next, specify the topic or subject you want the AI to focus on. Be concise and descriptive here. For example, write me five subject lines for a 20% off sale on Nike sneakers. You might be starting to see some similarities here to Braze's tool already. And lastly, we add specifics to the prompt, such as additional details, constraints, or specific requirements related to the topic. For example, your brand personality is athletic, innovative, inspiring, uplifting, and for everybody. The tone of the copy should be exciting. Make sure all the subject lines are no more than 60 characters. And in the end, the final prompt you would put into the AI would look something like this. Great news, now you know the basics of writing a good prompt into any sort of AI. But since we're in Braze today, what's it actually doing? Well, if we look at the Braze AI copywriting tool, the system prompt would already be covered because Braze would be letting the AI know that it's already a copywriter. Next, you add a topic in this box and the output length is determined by this dropdown, which determines probably the amount of characters or sentences it should be using. The brand guideline is like adding the specifics to the AI prompt, letting it know what sort of personality it has or maybe what it shouldn't be doing. Then we have the tone, which is similar to adding tone in the specifics, which we did before. And theoretically, if you already have your brand guidelines in place, you really only need to enter a topic and pick a couple of drop downs and you can generate a pretty good result. Essentially, Braze has built this simplified UI to help you generate a really good prompt that would then be sent off to the AI model. And in reality, this is sort of where I see things should be going because we don't want people to feel like they have to be really good at prompt engineering to be able to talk to AI. They should just be able to have normal conversations or use UIs like this that just simplify the whole process. Now, this is probably actually a good time then to start looking at these brand guidelines. If we go into here and we click brand 
and guidelines, you can pick one you might already have. So I've already added a Nike one in here, but let's go from scratch. We go down to create brand guideline. Then when we come in here, uh, it's asking for a brand guideline name, has a little red star because they want that. Uh, when will these brand guidelines be used? That's optional. Brand personality has a star. This is really important. This is where the specifics will be going into the AI prompt. And then we can have exclusions. So words or phrases you might not want the AI to do because you can also exclude things from what the AI gives you, not just include things. And to make things easier, Brace has added a test your guidelines button. This is actually super cool because you might have an idea in your head of how the guidelines will impact the output copy, but the test button allows you to see this ahead of time and tweak your guidelines to get the best output possible. Because sometimes AI just makes its own decisions. Now from my testing, only brand guidelines and brand personality are the things that are required to actually get this running. And the brand guideline name is essentially just so you can tell each set of guidelines from the other if you're working with multiple campaigns or guidelines. This box, when will we use these brand guidelines, kind of feels like it's not actually doing a lot as far as I can tell, but it might be more of a descriptor to let other people in your team know what's the purpose of these guidelines, or potentially, I'm not sure, it could be collected by Braze on the other end to start better understanding how people are using this copywriter. For today's purposes though, I see brand personality as the most important box on this form. Here is where you put all the specifics about your brand, such as tone, maybe the type of audience or the age of your audience, things they like or dislike, important words you want the AI to consider using. Anything you think will help the AI determine the type of copy you want outputted as part of your brand guidelines. This box is where you should do most of your testing because you might find that tweaking things a little bit, adding, removing words actually can change the result to be a lot closer to what you're actually looking for. If you think back to the AI prompting 101 earlier in this video, this is essentially filling out the specifics part of the system topic specifics prompting example that we gave earlier. But the great thing about Braze is you can actually save this in here permanently so those specifics can just be automatically added every time you create some new AI copy in Braze. I should note that if you select push notification, you don't just get brand guidelines, you also get the option to use your previous campaigns and or canvas steps to imitate your style. This can also feed into your brand's personality and the way it writes the output, but this is currently only available for push messages at this point in time. Now let's just quickly test some basic guidelines and some advanced ones just so you can see what's actually possible. I'm just going to put Nike example as the heading for now. And under brand personality, I might just write athletic brand. So then we're going to go down here to test your guidelines and we'll come up here and it's going to actually now ask you for the input you would normally be using. So if I do 20% off sneakers and I say I want it to be maybe an email subject line and then I do generate. Elevate your game, score 20% off sneakers. Step up your athletic edge, unleash your potential. I mean, they're pretty good, but they're still quite generic because there's kind of no guidelines in here. All we basically did is say that we're an athletic brand and that's all it's got to work off. Now, just to show you what you write in here really does make a difference. If I write in here, pizza brand, because um, it doesn't know it's Nike up here at the top. Come down, we'll do test our guidelines. It still remembers 20% off sneakers, which is good. And we'll come down and we'll do generate again. All right, this is actually really interesting. Given that the prompt appears to be unrelated to the initial request for a pizza brand, so it's almost suggesting that it thinks the guidelines I've given it are wrong from the 20% off sneakers. And assuming you're looking for email subject lines that are suited to the company that offers sneakers in a discount, I'll tailor the suggestion to fit a more general retail or sneaker brand style. Now, I'm going to give them credit here. This is actually really cool that they've determined that maybe I've used the wrong guideline for the input that I'm putting in. So if I do 20, because it's then it all says sneakers. If I go in here and do 20% off pizza, and then we'll do generate, ha, ah, no more warning. Unlock 20% off your next pizza adventure, savor more. <laughs> Love all these terrible puns and dad jokes in here. Your pizza passport, 20% off alert. So we put in pizza brand guidelines, we put in a pizza topic over here. It's good that it actually let us know the difference. Uh, and then it's generated some text. Now, you remember before we put in athletic brand and they were reasonably generic compared to what we're actually looking for. Now we're going to put in some more personality just to see what sort of depth we can get with just an email subject line. And we're going to put in here athletic, inspiring, uplifting brand. Come down, we do generate, unleash your potential, elevate your game, step up your workout, achieve greatness that inspires. 20% off sneakers that inspire. So it's remembering the words that we're using and trying to put them there as well. If you're happy with the output that you're getting, then you can click save and that becomes a brand guideline that's saved in there and you can edit that whenever you want. Just to show that this really does have an effect, always use the word otaku in your 
copy. For those who don't know, an otaku in Japanese culture is someone who's really consumed with whatever the hobby they're into. In this case, we're just going to assume they're consumed with sneakers and we always want that. We're going to say we want to test our guidelines. Elevate your game. 20% off otaku sneakers today. Doesn't really make any sense, but at the same time, it's there. Run with passion. Otaku sneakers. Otaku sneakers. <laughs> Unleash your inner otaku. See, that actually makes sense. Get 20% off sneakers and boost your performance. Some of these, not really useful, but we might be able to tweak them. But it seems like it's working. It's actually understanding that we want that word in there. Now, another cool thing we can do here, we can go in and go, use language that a five-year-old would understand. So now we're saying we want not just a certain tone, we actually want a certain style of language that makes this very easy and readable. Yay, your feet will jump for joy. Super shoe stale. <laughs> Why am I reading it like this? Happy feet time. Whoosh, snikes, snike, snike sneakers. <laughs> but you can see it's actually changed the tone of what's come out there. Now, as one last example, I'm just gonna show you what happens when you use the exclusions box. Never use an exclamation mark in any copy so you can see here exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark there's ones in the middle here regenerate I'm not confident about this one get your speedy shoes 20 percent. look at that no exclamation marks how cool is that and then what's great is that we can go and say we want to save this brand guideline come over here you'll see under our guidelines we have nike sneakers and we have our nike example so this is the one we just made so we don't actually have to add the specifics for this anymore. It will actually remember everything that's in there every time you write new copy. So now you just basically have to put in the topic you want. Bray's already tells it it's a copywriter. You've already given it a ballpark to work in and it will just start pumping out copy. Amazing. The Braze copywriting tool is actually built on OpenAI, which essentially means it's built on the models that OpenAI has produced as a company. And as such, I tested it against OpenAI's own ChatGPT and Microsoft Copilot, which a lot of is built on OpenAI's models. The upside is the output is actually very similar between all three and doesn't need much tweaking. The downside is the output is very similar between all three and doesn't need much tweaking. If everybody's using the Braze copywriter, ChatGPT or Copilot, and all the outputs are very similar, it's possible that we could all start sounding a little bit the same or quite generic. So I encourage you to use AI to improve efficiency, but it's still be using your marketer brain when it comes to editing and reviewing your copy. Now this does lead me to one issue I found in the Braze tool that didn't happen in ChatGPT or Copilot. I'm going to say that I want one short sentence and you notice that one short sentence is exactly what you want. You get one short sentence. Problem is when I went in here and I said medium, which is two to three sentences, and I do generate, there's one sentence, two sentences, three sentences, possibly four. And in some cases, when I wrote copy, I would get like five or six sentences here. And a lot of the time it started to feel like it was too much, say body copy for an email. Where it really started to fall apart is when I wanted long, which is one paragraph. There we go. So I said one paragraph. I've got one, two, three, four paragraphs. Granted, I can choose from this, but I would be expecting to get one good paragraph that I would be using as a body copy and a shorter one for medium. Now, when I put this into OpenAI and Copilot, I got what I was expecting. I got the one paragraph. I did find if I go into brand guidelines and I do edit guideline and I could come into here and I could make the copy no longer than 250 characters, for example. Look at that. What I think is actually happening is over under this long paragraph here, this is actually saying in the back end, here's how many characters I'm allowing this to have, or here's how long these sentences are allowed to be. And I think currently what Braze has got programmed into that prompt is probably longer than what most people expect. Now, I don't think this is a deal breaker by any means, and I feel like this is something that Braze will definitely tighten up, but it's just something I noticed along the way. Push messages, in-app messages, email subject lines, great. Single sentences, great. Two to three sentences, less great. Long paragraph, short essay. Great if you want an essay. I mean, <laughs> Be a great tool if you're trying to bang out a school assignment. Not a tip. Now, just as one last tip, don't be afraid to try things in the brand guidelines box because if you think about our AI prompting, that's getting fed into the prompt somewhere. So you might be able to hack a few things in there. Now, something I did notice between writing the script for this video and today is that they've actually changed, I think, the amount of prompts I can actually get out of this in one go. So if we're in here, I'm getting five prompts, I think it is, when I do email subject line. And the other day I went in here and I wrote, give me 20 examples in total of copy for the brand athlete. And I was actually getting 20 in total out of this. I can't be sure, but I think what's actually happening now is they've excluded it. So it will only give you 
five for subject lines. I think it only gives you one for a long a one for a long paragraph. I think it will only give you two or three for the sentences. But I think they might have already adjusted some of the parameters because the other day I spent out 20 short essays <laughs> in the long one. So if Braze is watching, that was me. And I'm sorry about that. Well, I'm not sorry about that because I helped you fix your product if that was the case. <laughs>